Earlier this month, I went to PAX Oz, which is the biggest gaming convention in the Southern Hemisphere. I had been talking about it for a while over on Twitch and it was requested by you guys that I make a vlog and a haul once I get back. And I did manage to make a mini vlog, which is now already up on my channel. There will be a link in the description if you haven't seen it already. But this is the haul video, so I'm going to share with you everything that I picked up. The first purchase I don't actually have with me right now because I ordered some of the PAX merch online. I actually ordered the PAX bomber jacket which was like a space bomber jacket which they did not have there at the convention, it was online order only. So I actually purchased one standing in the middle of the expo floor on my phone once I saw they were selling them. I did get a notification today that it is shipping, it just hasn't arrived yet. That is the only official PAX merch that I purchased. My first physical purchase actually didn't come from PAX, it came from a comic book store and if I can remember the name of the vendors and the places that I bought from I will have a list in the description. But I purchased the Sandman Volume 1 comic book. I had watched Sandman on Netflix recently and I'm kind of into it but it's also kind of a strange show and I was really curious if the comic book is just as strange or if Netflix did a strange adaptation of the comic book. Before PAX started we also went and checked out Uniqlo because Uniqlo always has some really good pop culture t-shirts and they're really good quality and I picked up this Sailor Moon one. If you watched the vlog you would have seen this in the vlog because I wore it on like day three of PAX I think but it just has a little Sailor Moon moon on the front. On the back they have this Sailor Moon artwork. Uniqlo make really good t-shirts. I have a lot of Uniqlo shirts. And then the only other clothing item that I purchased I'm wearing right now, which is the Cult of the Lamb t-shirt. The front has the little Cult of the Lamb logo, but then the back has like an entire artwork, which looks amazing. The t-shirt is really good quality in itself. I also tried to get Cult of the Lamb pins, but when we actually joined the queue, they had pins in stock. And by the time we got to the front, the pins had run out and they were on like the last of the t-shirts. Then I have recently completed my first D&D campaign and I picked up the Curse of Strahd D&D book because this is the campaign that I was a part of. I have been trying to find this almost since we started the campaign just to have it so I could read through it once we were done. And every time I walked into a bookshop or a comic book store, they never had Curse of Strahd. I could have ordered it online, but I really just wanted to like find it out in the wild for some reason. But one of the D&D stores at PAX had a copy of Curse of Strahd, so I finally got my hands on it. We actually went back to that vendor again and bought some Magic the Gathering D&D cards. And because we had spent some money with them. They actually gave us another D&D book for free. So this one is Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage and I don't know if I will ever play through this campaign or use it but I now have it. We just picked like a random one up. On the theme of D&D I also purchased my first D&D dice set if I can get this out. This is the pack of dice I chose. I'll probably insert a video so you can see them better but it's a full set of metal hollow dragon gold dice. They have a really cool design. I really like them. One of the things I like the most about this die set is you could really easily see the numbers. There were some die sets that I really liked there on the day but they were just really hard to make out the numbers so I went with this set. And then the dice place also had blind bags where you could purchase a blind bag and you got a set of mini dice so that's what's in this little bag. It's a full set of tiny little metal mini dice which I think I'm going to try and turn these into like D&D potion props where I have like the potions made up I have an idea, I'm going to try and do it tomorrow maybe and make it um, because these would fit perfectly in like jars that you could like roll out of potions. We'll see. This will be my first D&D prop that I attempt to make. Sometimes the greatest things you can get at these conventions are the freebies and I did get a couple of freebies. This one is a little Lego fox and I might try and put it together later so I can show you but this came from the M-Wave store. Matt purchased a mouse from them and then we got a token to use on their gacha machines that they had at the front and this is what I won from that. And then at the Aftershock booth, one of the days they were 3D printing key rings. And then I got one of those and you could get like a little custom design on it. And I got a picture from my book that I made on this little key ring. And then on the other side, it is like a graphics card. Now we might go through the pins because there were two pins that I had seen that were going to be at the expo before we went. And I absolutely had to buy them. And they were the unpacking ones. They had two unpacking pins. One is a cardboard box. And I really don't want to throw the card away because the card is so cute as well. I bought the cardboard box and then I also got the little pig plushie which I immediately put on my lanyard 
And then while I'm here, the other pins I bought, I bought this really heavy, this is a really heavy pin. It's kind of metallic, but it's really heavy duty. It's a really thick pin, as you can see, like the camera is even picking up the thickness of this pin. It is heavy. And then I had this pin as a freebie because I had bought so many other pins and it says Gamer Tears on the can. And then this pin I got because I finished the Fortress Hunt. I also got a pin from the same vendor I got most of these pins from, but it unfortunately broke. But I got this Stardew Valley Juniper pin, but the two pin holes at the back completely fell off. I had this on my lanyard and it didn't get pulled or anything. They literally just popped off there. But right now it's just like a little medallion, but this one was really cute. I'm really sad that it broke. I also got this pin as a bonus pin and I'm not sure what it's from, but it's one they just gave me because I bought so many pins. I don't know if it's from a game or if it's just their custom pin, but it's pretty cute. I like the colors. And then I got these two pins, which I was super excited about these two. They are these pins that you can draw on with a marker. This ghost one here is actually glow in the dark as well. You can see it's like color is a little different, but both of them you can custom write on. So those are all the pins I purchased from the pin place. I also got a bonus jewelry item. I got a bonus pin and a bonus jewelry item. I'm not sure how that worked out. And I got like a little Triforce necklace. I did one other gacha machine at PAX and it was for these little cute cable holders. And I won a little mouse one that like is a little felt guy that holds your cables. So I'll add him to my setup somewhere. This next item I'm super excited about. It's super cute. It is this little Kirby terrarium in like a little Pokeball display. And usually you see a lot of these with the Pokemon in them, but this store had a Kirby one. They had a few different designs, but this is the one I chose with the star and Kirby waving in there. It's super cute. One of the things that tons of people were buying over PAX weekend, and I think they might've been selling out or they had to like bring more from storage, were blind board game boxes. For $60, I think you bought a blind box that had three or more board games in them that were worth over $100 in value. But these are the three games that I got in my box and all the boxes were different. And I don't know if all the games are like this, but all the ones that I had in my box were award-winning at some point, like in the year that they released. They all have like board game awards. So I got this little game and it's called Cockroach Soup is what I learned this says. And it's basically one of those like card building, meal building games. And then I got two bigger board games. I have this one, which I don't know how to pronounce correctly. Zulkin maybe? But the aim of this game is to build a successful Mayan civilization around the Mayan calendar. And then this one is a 2020 award winner. It's called Pitches and it literally just relies on pictures mostly which I kind of like the mix that they put in my box because the Mayan board game looks like somewhat complicated long form game that you sit down you're really invested in for quite some time this one is a super quick game and then this one is like somewhere in between but also very simple because it's to do with pictures the last purchases kind of became a little bit of an addiction for us so eBay was actually at PAX and they were selling PSA cards and we checked them out a few times and then at one time we bought our first PSA Pokemon card, which we purchased Charmander. This is a 1999 edition game and it's a gem mint 10. So we had to purchase him because we saw him sitting there. But then when we went back either the next day or later, they had different cards on display and they had a Squirtle and a Pikachu 1999 gem mint 10s. So that's when we decided right there and then that we were gonna collect the starters and have the starters on display, including Pikachu as an original starter. So after packs, Again, we had three of the four starters from the 1999 game, all gem mint 10s, and all we had to do was get Bulbasaur. So once we got home, we got online, shopped around, and we purchased a 1999 Bulbasaur gem mint 10 for our collection. So now we have all four of the starters. So we're still figuring out exactly how we want to display them, but they're definitely going to become like a picture on the wall. We're going to frame them. They're not going to be like for resale. Most likely, we're not going to resell them. We just collected them for ourselves. But that is the end of our purchases for the weekend. That's everything that I got. I don't think I missed anything. Coming back, I tried to keep everything together so that I would have it all in one place for this video. And now I can start putting things away. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I purchased along with my mini vlog. I appreciate any and all love that you guys give to my videos. Thank you for watching. Hopefully we're doing this again next year and I can go back for 2023. Let me know what your favorite item was. I think mine is probably like this Kirby terrarium or possibly even the ride on pins. I don't know. I kind of liked everything. Let me know what your favorite was in the comments below. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll catch you in the next one. Fire. That record be making a scene.